Donna Cordier, welcome to Montgomery Week in Review. Montgomery County made history almost 40 years ago by creating the Agricultural Reserve to preserve farmland in the northern part of the county and creating zoning laws to make it possible. Scott Fossler, a former county council member, as well as the first host of this program, will comment. The Rural Maryland Council is concerned with the farms, the crops, and the animals raised in our state, as well as the farmers who are affected by changes. Charlotte Davis, the executive director of the RMC, will tell us the latest from the state. Recently retired for the second time from his employment with the county, which included work as special assistant to County Executive Ike Leggett and Mark Elrich, as well as other jobs in the area of health and human services, Chuck Short has made many appearances on this program. He will look back on the way this county cares for the, its residents. Montgomery College continues to thrive with three campuses that provide classes to high school students, college students, and the more mature residents of our county. Brad Stewart, provost of the Tacoma Park campus, will report. Well, thank you for coming to our show one more time. It was your show for a long time. What can you tell us about the last 40 years? Well, there's been both stability and change over 40 years. I want to say, first of all, congratulations to our producer, Carla Satinsky, who was the founder of this program and has carried it on all this time, and all of the folks who have been instrumental in making it such a success. And I was enormously proud to be part of that at, at the outset. Well, you guys were the pioneers who, we who the got pioneers. it rolling and started, figured out the perfect format, and most importantly, which now we, I think, feel it the most, is getting our county and local news, because nowadays yes. it's not so available. That's very, very true. And at, when we started out, we were focusing on journalists of local newspapers. There are hardly any local newspapers anymore. Right, right. right. So what can you tell me about your observation of what, how, you know, the evolution of the county and, and the different things with the agricultural reserve, which is so important. It was such an innovative idea back then, wasn't it? It was an innovative idea back then, and it was also um, in the context of a broader concern that we had with smart growth. We recognized that suburban sprawl just uh, could not continue. We did have the guidepost of the general plan for the Washington metropolitan area, known as the Wedges and Corridors Plan, in which we would have a combination of green wedges and high density corridors coming out from the District of Columbia. And the question was, well, what will those green wedges look like? And at the time, we already had this wonderful agricultural community in Montgomery County. We were losing it very, very quickly. And we knew we would ha have to act quickly if we were going to preserve it. Absolutely. So the idea came up to establish an agricultural reserve of about one third of the county uh, which is what those green wedges were for. And that's we, amazing that, you know, oh, I, I, I think a lot of us don't realize how large the county is yeah. because a third of it is the Ag Reserve. A third of it is the Ag Reserve. Um, and when we adopted on the council the Agricultural Reserve Zone, we also realized that there was a uh, problem of of uh, farmers uh, losing some of the potential equity in their land, so we established something called the Transferable Development Rights Program, which gave the farmer owners of that land certain development rights. While they couldn't develop it on the farmland, they could transfer it to the high density areas and preserve some of the, the capital as well as the land so that they could continue in real agricultural activity. So how does the Suburban County Council come up with ideas like this? Um, in part because there had been advanced planning done. Okay. Uh, we, we knew that uh, we had to develop a smart approach to growth. We couldn't mm -hmm. continue with the sprawl. And we also realized that the green wedges idea was important in this case not only pre for preserving agriculture, mm -hmm. but also pr for preserving open space, mm -hmm. okay. for green space, for recreational space. It's become kind of the green lungs of the the, the, okay. uh, the Washington metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. uh, so it served all of those purposes and we saw it as a, a way of having compatible 
uh, land uses in, mm -hmm. a, in a smart growth context. Well, it's also an environmental benefit too to have these open areas because of the trees and the grass, mm -hmm. they're absorbing in you know car carbon dioxide, which is helping to retain nutrients from flowing into the bay. Exactly. I, Scott, I'm grateful to you and the council members for your vision, uh, and I suggest to our viewers, Mariana, mm -hmm. that the next time you fly over the Washington area, yeah. <clears throat> carefully look at Northern Virginia, of course the district, but especially Northern Virginia and Montgomery County. Here you fly in over the river, you will see a huge difference in the amount of green in Montgomery County versus Virginia, and that's thanks to this policy. You're right, Chuck, it's quite dramatic. And it I is. I think of that every time I fly <clears throat> in and out, and you can see that difference. It's a result of a determined policy uh, by the people of Montgomery County making that decision. Um, and one of the big questions is, are we going to preserve the reserve so that it's there for future generations? So for the future, what would you, in the next minute that we have left, uh, recommend to our folks on the County Council and the audience about what, what challenges the Ag is facing and, and what we're going to need to continue to, to support? Well, the, the County Council appointed a, a, an Agricultural Reserve Working Group a few years ago. I was a, a co-chair of it, and we looked at that question very carefully, and it, what it comes down to is, is pretty straightforward. The real threat is the death by a thousand cuts, hmm. constant pressure. Well, we can change this, we yeah. can change that, we can change this, and each of those changes is plausible, it makes a certain amount of sense, but when it begins to build up pretty soon, you no longer have an agricultural reserve. That's okay. going to be the key challenge. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that, and hopefully everyone will continue to support yeah. <laughs> the agricultural <laughs> reserve, which Charlotte is a perfect uh, yeah, segue really into nicely. your story. You guys coordinate, right? <laughs> but um, so I I heard just Monday there was a really important case that came down that affects the agricultural reserve. Mm -hmm. Can you explain it to us? Sure. Um, there was a, a court case before the Court of Appeals that was looking at um, whether local governments have authority to preempt uh, decisions regarding uh, utility scale uh, renewable energy facilities. So large scale, we're talking, you know, not small, you know, can utility scale, 100 megawatts more, um, so 100 what, acres. What is this? Is this like wind farms, sun solar, solar farms panels? specifically, yeah. but also wind is, a port, is important. And the PS, uh, the Court of Appeals ruled that the Public Service Commission has sole authority in determining mm -hmm. whether these facilities can be located in certain areas or not. Um, with the rationale that you know nobody wants to live next to a large public power, and this is mainly looking at you know, the old gas-fired and coal-fired plants. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to live next to a large-scale utility mm -hmm. like that. Um, so, the, you know, let's Public Service Commission's going to decide where these go because it's every, every neighborhood's going to object to it. And this uh, trumps the The local, local zoning, zoning laws, right? Because a couple of years ago, we supported a uh, bill that was passed uh, that was proposed by MACO, the Maryland Association of Counties, that said the PSC needed to consider local zoning, and their decisions, local ordinances, when citing these facilities. Um, we're seeing intense pressure on ag land to convert you know, open space to this ag fertile, fertile ag land to you know, renewable energy. And it's mainly being driven by the renewable portfolio standard, which everybody wants. You know, we want the Green New Deal, it is mm -hmm. jobs, but we're, you know, the, the idea is we've got fertile agricultural land is the best land use to keep it in agricultural use for resiliency so that we have access to food. Or is it better well, to convert it? Who likes to eat, really? I mean, you know, <laughs> nobody likes that? to eat. I guess. So, or breathe, where, so yeah. where should you put the panels? Well, and where we, should we put we the windows? We want to see that um, you know we look at uh, non-fertile land. You know, the the brown fields areas. There's there's some land um, that's too, the soils are rocky in okay. Maryland. Mm -hmm. So the 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 more I try to think of the name. You know, the, the ones that there are a lot of uh, soils around the state that okay. aren't fertile, mm -hmm. particularly okay. out in Western Maryland. Yeah. And there are areas in Western Maryland where wind is really, would be yep, really right. well sited right. there. Mm -hmm. And we're just finding challenges with getting these, these developments off the ground because the locals object. There's a couple counties with moratoriums. Mm -hmm. Frederick County had a moratorium on solar faci facilities, Talbot County. 
Um, we have an offshore, we've had offshore wind facility yep. proposed mm -hmm. for many years mm -hmm. that we haven't been able to get built because of these local issues mm -hmm. and siting concerns. So we just had a controversy here in Montgomery County regarding the location of a single cell phone tower. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And what you're saying to me, if I understand you correctly, is that the uh, uh, commission, public service commission, would be able to locate yes. these wind mills mm -hmm. anywhere in Montgomery County if they chose to do so. Yes. Yeah. Wow, what a what an impact that would have. Yeah, that'll oh, yeah. make the NIMBYs crazy. That yeah. <laughs> I mean I think it will ripple down to small the discussion with small cells. You yeah. know, those are public utilities as well. And yeah. where those are cited and we we support local governments right to mm -hmm. cite these mm -hmm. facilities and and choose where these mm -hmm. need to go to support the community. Mm -hmm. So for us we're concerned about, you know, what that's gonna mean in the future for mm -hmm. how um, particularly for rural since we're losing our rurality around the state mm -hmm. and the benefits that come from having open space and um, we'll remind the audience what are the benefits of having open space well it's generally for for recreational purposes tourism but environmental too I mean it's the trees like I said before trees and all these things they they provide environmental benefits mm -hmm. uh, they clean the air they're retaining nutrients so that we're then we're not polluting as much into the bay and, uh, and I think people enjoy having access to open space. They want, when they choose a community to live in, I think par access to parks are important. And, um, and local community crops. gardens, local yeah. Crops, Being I able think. to buy local. So this week is the Buy Local Week. And there's a Buy Local Challenge going on mm -hmm. where we challenge everybody to make, you know, just purchase one local product and for dinner every night for the next week. It starts on, uh, I believe, on Friday. Bottle of wine. Yes. So is, there, of <laughs> is there any compatibility between solar panels and agriculture? We think there is. We think we want to see the economics work out so that a farmer, instead of converting the whole plot, so 200 acres, 300 acres, mm -hmm. instead of right now the economics work, they, they need to do the whole thing in solar. So we'd like to see those economics work so that maybe they set aside 25 acres, 50 acres, you know. They can generate some electricity to power their facility, maybe sell a little bit back, generate some revenue to mm -hmm. keep the farm profitable. Um, but right now the economics don't work and you need to be located near uh, infrastructure. Okay. So that drives up the cost. And unfortunately we have to leave that conversation there, but it's such an important topic. We'll yeah. hopefully one day be coming back to touch it again. All right, so we have to take a break and we'll be right back. Chuck Short, thank you for being on the show. And I have to say, thank you so much for your dedication to Montgomery County. That mm -hmm. is quite a, a wonderful and, and a career to be proud of. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. I'm delighted to be here and uh, want to add to what Scott said, my thanks to Carla Statinsky for the, this idea uh, 32 years ago and Scott's leadership in turning that idea into a real community gem. Yeah, she definitely, the outreach and the information, and now with technology, you can see it on YouTube, mm -hmm. so you can see it from anywhere around the world if oh, you're no. interested. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, quite a pioneer in mm -hmm. the thought of, of, of doing this for television, mm -hmm. and uh, but a humble person. You can't catch her on camera. <laughs> she refuses. <laughs> but so tell us a little bit about your experience and, and the trajectory that you've seen you know, serving uh, the county and the issues, have they changed, are they the same? Well, it, it's an interesting question. First, it's just been an enormous honor for me to serve this county for over 40 years, uh, to serve every county executive, county council members, uh, the people of this county uh, often aren't involved, engaged enough with local government to understand the incredible competence commitment mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, hard work that these elected officials, it's easy to yell and scream and be unhappy about a particular issue. Mm -hmm. But when you look at 
40 years or so, their commitment to the public kinds of public policies we talked about earlier, the Ag Reserve. Um, it, this is, uh, we are very blessed to live in Montgomery County, and I've been very blessed to have a career working with people, particularly most of my career <clears throat> has been in the area of human services. So I've worked with a great many volunteers and nonprofit agencies, and I'll tell you, these are good people. The people of this county are good people. And it, it, it's made my job a joy. Uh, and it certainly has made life and challenges for some of our most vulnerable people more bearable. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I've, I've just enjoyed it greatly. I think, <laughs> I joke, I'm not sure how successful I've been uh, <laughs> well, over these 40 say, years. Well, I was just going to say, earlier we were talking, yeah. <laughs> and some of the issues you said that you guys were facing in this county in around you know, the 70s and 80s, sounds like what we're facing yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking back, just, I'm not going to go back to 1973, no. but to when this show started around 1988, so we, our biggest issues then were um, affordable housing, immigration, um, substance abuse. Uh, don't they sound familiar? Yeah, I, I'm um, like, you know, uh, and, nothing's and changed. So, <laughs> have we gotten a little bit better? Yeah, I guess we have to work on it till we get it right. You know, we've, I think we've done a lot of good things in those areas, yep. uh, many, many good things, there's no doubt about it. But one of the things that I would point out that I feel is on the negative side of that um, is, is I think the tenor of our civics, of our civic conversation, yeah. unfortunately has tracked a little bit the national um, tenor. And, and, and uh, we've become uh, uh, a little less polite than we it were. It used to be you could agree to disagree. And That's then right. at the end of the day, still have a civil conversation. That's right. It seems like people hold it Chuck, closer. Chuck, you, you've developed a reputation over many years as a kind of a, a, a model public servant <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the highest level. Yeah. Uh, and um, you've seen a lot of changes, just mm -hmm. talking about the environment and the like. What, what advice would you give to public servants today and to young people thinking about coming into public service given the environment that we have at the present time. Yeah, admit it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, first of all, I, the first thing I would say, and Scott and I taught together at the University of Maryland School of Public Policy, and first thing I said, said to my students was go local. I encourage people to mm -hmm. work in local government because you can really make a difference. Not that the national government isn't important, but local government, you can really adopt the kinds of policies Scott talked about earlier. So that would be the first thing. The second thing is, is that you need to, I believe, we need to keep as close as we possibly can to what the people are saying in Montgomery County. Um, bure bureaucrats sometime, and I was a bureaucrat for a long time, can sometimes think we know best. Better than yeah. the public. Um, and sometimes we judgment. do, by the way. <laughs> there, 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 there's no, you know, but always the citizens, always our residents uh, have important information for us. Okay. And I think that's something that's a, we need we're to We're going to have to end it there, yep. and that's a wonderful way Thank to you. end that session. Jeez, oh, I was waiting for the good stuff about the county executives. <laughs> we have no, no scandals or secrets being shared today, oh, but crap. thank you so much. You have to wait, again, for, my, you have you for, to wait for my, you have to yep. wait for my book. <laughs> but I want to be your agent for that book. Well, so Montgomery College yep. is sporting uh, now a solid one color is that well we got purple and we got silver in there and a little bit of black <laughs> well, it looks great so tell us a little bit about montgomery college how's it doing so montgomery college when i got here 15 years ago uh, had just been named by the new york times as one of the top community colleges uh, in the country uh, and that meant some interesting things. One, there was a big access part of that mission thing. Uh, and when I talked to people in Montgomery County, I mentioned I worked at Montgomery College, everybody knows the college. Yeah. Uh, and everybody would tell me a story about how the college was there for when somebody in their family or their circle of friends needed them. That's uh, true. That's very that was kind true. Of a great message, mm -hmm. but uh, over the years I've been ruminating about that message as sort of, uh, well, that means we're a convenience institution. Uh, and what has happened recently at Montgomery College uh, is that we have gotten a lot bigger and better, uh, and I think we're turning into what I call a destination institution. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what does that mean? Well, that means that we now have the academic programs, for example, uh, that are going to be there for the careers of tomorrow and the careers of today. Uh, when I got here, I was told to double the size of the nursing program. Uh, we've done that and some. So we now admit 144 nursing students every semester. Uh, to the That's college. Uh, back then our engineering program was pretty small. Uh, we now have the largest engineering program in a community college uh, in the country. They transfer to Georgia Tech, MIT, uh, RIT, all of those places. Uh, the latest thing we've been up to is a bunch of cybersecurity stuff. Oh, that's uh, super important. Yeah, that's like cutting edge. And cutting edge stuff. Uh, I predict that uh, Amazon will be knocking on our door shortly uh, to help us train uh, their workforce, and they'll, they'll need that sure. uh, for us a while. So um, community colleges have sort of become, uh, well, if I can't do this, I can always go there to the place to go. That's great. And I think it's so wonderful that it gives the students an opportunity mm -hmm. to be a little bit more flexible in exploring and identifying what career they want yep. without a huge expense that could come if you do that in a, in a university environment. Yeah, I don't. Um, Montgomery College's tuition for community college uh, is fairly high, uh, but it's l really low compared to everybody else yeah. because of foresight like Scott uh, and Chuck and uh, the resources uh, that Montgomery County develop, uh, devotes to the college. When I tell people where our budget comes from uh, at Montgomery College and why we can build the programs we have, they get immediately get jealous uh, when we tell them about the county's level of support. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I've always thought one of the great successes of Montgomery College has been its ability to reflect the diversity of Montgomery mm -hmm. County. Montgomery County, over this period of years, yep. it has been a, an enormously diverse place. It's become more diverse. What's been the secret to Montgomery College's well, success um, in this area? So we were out in front of the, diver uh, you know, the demographic mm -hmm. changes that hit the county. Uh, they hit us first. Uh, because people come to us, uh, and it sounds a little bit trite, uh, but they come to us to change their lives, uh, to get their access to the American dream. Uh, and so they look at Montgomery College, they look at the value proposition for us, uh, and they say, you know what, I can change my, for not only myself, but for my family, mm -hmm. my parents maybe, and my kids, uh, if I can get that cybersecurity degree. I think that, that the word community in your title, community college, mm -hmm. uh, is so meaningful in so many ways. Mm -hmm. When I think of Montgomery College, I often think of the partnerships you have created mm -hmm. with the different elements of the community. You were talking about the nurses. I know mm -hmm. you have a tremendous partnership with Holy Cross Hospital, yep. I think, right? And there are other partnerships that the college has. Yeah, the Holy Cross Hospital, uh, that's the only hospital on a community college campus. Uh, in the country, uh, so they're a shining example of that. Uh, local corporations, uh, yeah, we, uh, just yesterday I was over at Norwood School uh, in Bethesda, they have a program they call Horizons. They want to partner with Montgomery College uh, to create a pathway for their elementary students. You know, they work with uh, K through nine students. They want to start getting those students ready for college. Uh, and you have some trades. Oh. Partnerships too, don't you? Oh yeah, um, uh, with the automobile mm -hmm. stuff, uh, mm -hmm. with the construction industry. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we give out at every graduation is we let one of our apprentices uh, from our uh, HVAC or construction management program uh, talk to uh, the audience. Uh, and it changes, the, if you wanna sort of tear up a little bit uh, when you listen to what these folks can do for themselves, it's That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I, I hope MC keeps going. <laughs> oh, we will. Oh, yeah. We will. Not going anywhere. <laughs> All right, so this is our second to last show, so I want to remind everybody that next week will be our last show. Thank you, all of you, for joining me today, and thank you for joining us this and for this week's edition of Montgomery Week in Review. I'm Mariana Cordier. Please join us next week at the same time. <laughs>